Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon of Savage Reads and today I'm joined by my mate Kate. Hi. Who some of you may know as magic underscore kitten on the old Twitter. Yeah. Or from a podcast that she does with her fiance Rob. Oh. Which yeah, which is, is called Adventures with Words. Um, Simon always gets it wrong and calls it Word Adventures. So, we're going to have a chat about books, and it could go anywhere, frankly. But the best place to start is at the beginning, because it's a very good mm. place to start, in the fact that we thought we'd talk about what we are reading. So, Kate, ladies first, what are you reading? So, I am reading... I'm reading Normal People by Sally Reedy. Let's try this, hang on. There! <laughs> <laughs> I am one of those... Readers, where if everyone is going on about a book, I then go, oh, I'm not going to read that then. Yeah, that's what I'm like. So yeah, so I hadn't read... <laughs> so you did to me, because so... I, I decided that I took against every word that Sally Rooney had ever written. Really? Well, yeah. no, I didn't, I didn't do that. Because I thought everybody was saying she's the millennial voice, and I was like, mm, mm. I don't want to read that then. But I've also just finished this recently. Did you love it? I'm really like you can. I'm oh, about. End, sorry, I'm, I haven't quite finished it, but the bookmark is like there. But I'm really, really enjoying it. I loved it. I properly, 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 really good. properly loved it. Not just loved it. Properly, all those properly loved it. There was a there was a point about a third of the way in where I almost cried on the train because Don't do it that, just Kate. it really got me. And then there was another point about halfway through where I was really, really shocked by it as well so even though it's not big dramatic events no. it's really little you basically follow two kids who are at the same school mm. when they first kind of meet and mm. one of them his mum is a cleaner for her parents yeah and so there's the whole class discussion in the book as well which is really really interesting and mm. then you've also got the whole um kind of they start a sort of secret relationship and then you follow mm. it and what's really clever is it'd be like three months later five months later four hours later and it just jumps back in a really really clever i don't like the word clever actually in a really really brilliant way um and you just get the whole picture of this relationship that they have which is kind of undescribable because it doesn't have they're not sure about what it is themselves let alone you as a reader really i thought that was so realistic that when you're you know, however, when you're 17 or 18, you don't sit down and say, well, you know, this, no. oh, we're now having this sort of relationship, we're going to do it this way round. And because there's all the, the kind of politics at school, she's seen as a bit of a weirdo. She is a um, bit of a weirdo. And as you get to learn more about her, she's very weird. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's so, really true. It's so you've not quite finished it. I'm reading no. two books at the moment, which never <gasps> normally happens to me. But I'm reading a book that I've mentioned on this channel so many times I feel like it's got ridiculous. <laughs> Which is when What It Means When A Man Falls From The Sky by Leslie Nanika, I keep saying this wrong, Arima. And this, if you've read Karis Davies short mm. stories, I think these are like a Nigerian version of her because they've oh, all cool. got a real surprise in them. Not a twist, but a surprise. Mm. And um, they just do something that you don't expect sort of every time. I'm not very far in. I'm only like on the third one. Mm. Um, but I do have a very cute... Oh, look! Bookmark. And then the other one, I only just started the other day on a train. Mm. And as this goes live, it'll be a few days ago. It's the Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Marie Crowhurst. I am only three or four chapters into this. It's very quick. Oh, I folded a page and then unfolded it. I don't know why. Um, and it's about Ursula Flight, who I think is going to be this kind of pioneering, quite extreme, extravagant character, mm. um, who I think is based possibly on... There was a book about, um, was it Margaret the First? There was a book out from yes. Scribe last year, yeah. which I didn't really love, but I loved the idea of the woman who it was about, um, who was this pioneer woman who wrote fiction and kind of thought about astrology mm. and physics and philosophy and all those things. And Ursula thinks about all those things, but she's only a little girl at the moment and she's just sort of oh. starting to question the stars and what star signs mean. And I think I'm going to enjoy it because she seems like she's going to be a bit of a... She, she ends... As, as a child so far, she's definitely embracing her naughty side. Excellent. And she has quite a few tantrums, which I enjoy, because I have them often. So that's what I'm reading, but um, not very far in, because on the train, somebody just wanted to talk to me the whole way. So what are you thinking about reading next? Because you've been having a nosy through my shelves. I have. Um, so I d stupidly didn't realise how quick of a read this would it be. It is very, very And fast. I thought this would take me... All the way to the pool and all the way back again, which is clearly not. It's not going to happen. Kate. So I have 
snaffled a few books from the event that I was at yesterday and I was oh. thinking that I would probably read one of those just to keep me going on the train but then the thing that I really want to read next is this. Everything Under by Daisy Johnson which is long listed for the booker. It is. Um, I think... Full disclosure, Kate works for Jonathan <laughs> Cope. I mean, <laughs> yes. We should have actually said, we are Kate of Nature, that we think about eight years we had a podcast together called Hearing This, which mm -hmm. I really wish would come back. Just putting it out there, Rob and Kate. I'd, um, I'd do it. I'd do it. That's how we met. And then Kate at the time was a teacher, but now she's moved into the world of publishing. Yes, yeah, so I, I work at Vintage. Who deal with lots, you deal with lots of different... I need to stop moving. <laughs> Woo! Kate keeps going, going a bit bright and white because yeah. she's moving. Because she's animated, because we're having a chat. Um, I've got a super shiny face. Whereas I get a super red face. Mm. What a beautiful pair of faces. <laughs> I haven't read this yet, obviously, because... You want to read it. I'm going to read it next. Um, but I decided this year to try to read everything on the book a long list. See, I had this year. Last year I wanted to, and this year I want to. But I'm just doing it by whim when I feel mm. the mood takes me. And this is also very high on my books I'd like to read soon. Yes. I mean, I think maybe there will be some that I don't get to, but I bought slash borrowed slash was sent. Stole. Now that I've people. got the whole, I've got the whole long list. I think um, this is a retelling of a myth. And you should have seen a minute ago, Kate was looking at my shelves at the books I haven't read this year. She's like, you've not read Cersei. <gasps> she was so furious. Good. I'm just too nervous about it. Because I love Honestly. Song of Achilles oh. so much. I'm really nervous about I, it. I, th I think it's even better. But I, that makes me even more nervous. Because what if I'm the partner? If you like the Song of Achilles, you'll definitely love Cersei. It's really, really wonderful. And it's got all these kind of incredible characters that takes you through all the different Greek myths. Enough about Madeline Miller. Back to Daisy Back Johnson. Back to Daisy Johnson. Who we both read her short story collection, Fen. Yes. And I really, really, really loved that. So, so brilliant. And I think if short story collections could have been on the Booker long list, I think that would have been. And now she's written a novel. I think it's time that short stories are on the Booker list. I think so Now that as we've well. had poetry, I'm um, say what you like, one of those books is poetry. Yeah. They're claiming it's not, yeah. but it is. And, and graphic novel. And I, I kind of feel like a couple of years ago, um, there was a book which was pitched as a series of interlinking narratives to form a novel. Yeah. If you can say that, it, it, I mean, it, it's a sort of story collection. Yeah, it is. So. Back to Daisy, I've heard from Mercedes, this is amazing. And apparently there's some mm. sort of monster living in a canal. Yes. And or the Fenlands. Yes. Yeah, Marshlands, so canals, they're different. The rivers and canals and waterways around Oxford and oh. Oxfordshire. So if you've read La Belle Sauvage. Or as I like to call it, the Savage Belle. Yeah, or as Rob calls it, the beautiful sausage. Yeah. Lee, I feel like... Doesn't Rob call me that? Oh, it's his pet name for you. Oh. I've given that away. Sorry. Um, yeah, I feel like there's definitely a bit of crossover and I think, uh, I love, also I just am obsessed with the cover. So, there's been a bit so of a backlash stunning. about covers like this recently and I don't think it's correct because look, if you look, it doesn't actually really say anything about the book on the cover specifically. No. It does look like it's sort of nice plantations and a bit yeah. psychedelic. But it doesn't necessarily say that this is a book that's set on people who live on sort of water life or anything. But I think it doesn't matter. It's a beautiful cover. I think it's gorgeous. Beautiful. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And it reminds me of um, the illustrations of Jan Piankowski. Did he do, what was that book that I had as a kid about raindrops? Yeah. The raindrop a necklace. necklace of raindrops. Yeah. And also The Kingdom Under the Sea, which were these wonderful, one. wonderful fairy, like new fairy tales. Um, and he did these illustrations that looked a lot like this, which had the, almost the like marbling and then the silhouettes and so on. And I just, yeah, I, I just think absolutely love it. Covers need to be eye-catching. That's what mm. I think. And that's an eye-catching cover. So yeah. what's wrong that it doesn't necessarily instantly make you know what the book is about? I think that's good because also sometimes you don't want to know too much about a book. I deliberately don't find out too much about a book before I start it, which might seem odd for a person who works in publishing. If I haven't read a book, I will learn the like one sentence that I can say about it to someone to describe Elevator it. Elevator pitch. Exactly. And I might have read the, the blurb of the things that we publish on our you know, internal database system, yeah. 
but I don't try and find out too much about the characters. And if I buy a book in a bookshop, often it's because of the name of the person, it's because of a beautiful cover, or it's because someone else has already yeah. recommended it to or me. I might hear like I a, don't like to the author talking about it. A smidge. But my favourite author interviews are the ones where they don't give too much away. It's yeah. more about the sort of sense of a book rather than giving up too much because this you want to have that reading yeah, experience. Yeah, definitely. So that's what you want to read next. I haven't decided what I'm going to read next because I'm doing something a little bit. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Lots of people think it's a bad idea. <laughs> um, in the fact that when I go to America, I am packing two books. That is it. Really? For a week. Only yeah. two? I'm taking two, and they're for the flight. So I'm taking, well, I don't know yet because I'm excited. I'm going to do it literally the, on the Wednesday morning, oh which I've just gone. I'm going to pack two books for the flight, and then I'm going to buy as I go. But what, what are you going to do with them, though? What do you mean? Are you going to bring them all back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got two cases. I've got a luggage allowance for two <laughs> cases. Um, so yeah, so I'm taking loads of books to quite a few of my mates out there. Yeah. But then that, that also leaves me space to bring back okay. loads of books. Yeah. And I just think it's a chance for me to, because in this room, as you can tell if you see this room, I still haven't done a library tour on this channel, and I will at some point, I promise. There's so many books here that I can shop around my shelves, which is really lovely, but also sometimes it does feel a little bit like, oh my God, I've got so many books. Mm. Not that I'm moaning people who send me them. Okay. <laughs> Not moaning, but I think it will be a really interesting experience to go and have to literally go to a shop and shop for what I'm going to read right yeah. then and there. I've not done that before. Completely on a whim. Yeah. There are two books that are kind of at the top of my probably going to mm -hmm. pack. And one is um, Shut Eye. Is it called Shut Eye? No, Snap. Do you mean? Sorry. Yeah, by I Belinda say. Bauer. I she also wrote a book, a book called, called Shut Eye. No, she did write a book called Shut Eye. Or The yeah. Shut Eye. It's over there. <laughs> Nobody can see. The other one is. Um, the the new is it the trials of morrigan that everyone's oh, saying is the new harry I've, potter i've read it it's very good is it that book the, the trials of morrigan crow there we go that one um so i think they're possibly the two that are going to go in my case i would say if you're thinking that it's going to be a new harry potter i think a much better comparison is um some of the children's films from studio ghibli i don't know who that is you know, like the Japanese films, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Know, those kind of things, because it's much more, one, I think it's much more cute. Right. Um, there's lots of really fun, memorable, quirky characters who are like lots of different creatures. Okay. Um, and it made me think of almost like the hotel in um, the film Spirited Away, where it's peopled with all these incredible different um, sort of things of different shapes and sizes. Hmm. And yeah, there's a. It's all around a hotel. I think the isn't the um, the whole thing. But people aren't saying it is a new Harry Potter, mm. but people are saying it's kind of what is going to be the next yeah. addictive I, kids series. I hope it is as well because it's re like it's really fun to read. It's got kind of wit witchcraft in it, but in a much more like spooky witches way. Oh. I think it's a book that I'm going to be completely like because I don't like flying. And it's mm. 11 hours on a plane. <laughs> Weirdly, I like takeoff and I like landing. I just hate being stuck <laughs> in a confined space for that amount of time. I'm thinking if I've got a really good crime yeah. and a really good like addictive YA book, I think mm -hmm. I'll be all right. Now, what I want to ask you mm. before we go is, yeah. now you work in publishing, yeah. how much do you think your reading has changed? Because now you have to read for work mm. and um, do a job. That's something that people always get, I think, a bit wrong. Probably people that just think you sit and read all day. I know. I now work in the marketing team. Um, so it's not like being an editor where you have to read something and make suggestions yeah. and sort of help to craft the manuscript. But I do have to obviously read anything that I am working on because I have to be able to explain to other people why they might like it. And create it. a campaign around it as well. And yep, yeah, then do, yeah, write more copy about it and create adverts and yeah, make this whole campaign. Because we were saying downstairs, one thing that's changed is that you can't talk about some of the books you read, which must be quite difficult because yeah. that's I, kind I of got how we first to... met in the fact that I that know. was what... And I used, I used to just, I probably used to read three or four books every week um, and I used to read very quickly and just kind of whiz through things and now I probably read one book a week but because I'm dipping in and out of lots of different yeah. things um, I get to read, it's, it's not the same 
at every publishing house, but I get to read some submissions. Mm. So before they've Kate was been talking acquired, about one earlier that's filthy. Very exciting. <laughs> um, I think someone else has bought it, oh. which is fine. But it's now fine. I'm quite looking to see, looking forward to see what's happened to it. Um, but yeah, it means there are there are things that we haven't even bought yet that I read, um, and then say basically say if I like them and if I think we that's should publish cool. them. Which, very exciting. That is very exciting. Um, but then, so obviously, I can't tell people about those. So I can't even tell Rob about them. Really? Because they might have oh, the same also, book. Yeah, because also Rob works in publishing. Yeah. So yeah, and I'll link both Rob and Kate. Well, no, I won't ring Lobs. <laughs> Lobs. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my nickname for him. I'm his beautiful sausage and he's my beautiful lob. Rob needs to be on this channel before he gets a link yeah. below, but I'll link to Kate down below. Um, but does do you miss being able to just sort of read by whim? Because that's something that I've really, really embraced this year. I I think it's actually made me do that more. Oh, that's good. In a funny way. Because although there are specific things that I have to read because I'm working on them, mm. and there are specific things that are... Oh, like big company books so everyone reads them other than that I tr I probably read more just whatever I fancy oh, okay. and I f I am worrying less now about like when we when we were doing the podcast more regularly we used to get sent um lots of things which was really lovely but then I would I'd start worrying that no, I hadn't read things no over the um, summer I've now decided yeah. and you might disagree with this attitude as being for a publisher but I think books have the right time. And yes, I'm very lucky mm. in the fact that I get sent lots of books. And what I hope I never appear is that I'm ungrateful for that. Mm. But it's about timing. And I know that a publisher very recently said, I may not always read the book when they arrive and when they want me <laughs> to read them. But if I really get behind a book, I'll then shout about it. And that's what all great readers mm. do, I think. With my publisher hat on, um, if you had said to me, Kate, I'm going to read this book. I will have a review out on this day. And that's... Then... I'd be a bit miffed if you didn't. Yeah. But if I've sent you a book, I'm sort of doing it because I hope you like it. Yeah. And then I would much rather, if you didn't like it, put it to one side. Yeah. So, Thanks very much. And then that was it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't tend to ask for very many books, if any at all, actually, recently. Apart from one, which is you'll have seen in the hall, I asked for because I thought it was about one thing and it totally wasn't. And I was like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> People who have seen this channel for a long time know. I also buy a blinking ridiculous amount of books. And I think, I mean, it's like, it's a sickness, to be honest. But a nice one. <laughs> yeah, and it's a really, oh no, not, no, it's I not like so nice for my mouth but But, um, but I mean, I do the same, and I've got hundreds, I mean, I genuinely, I have hundreds of books, like, as in over a hundred, yeah. maybe not quite two hundred, but o like over a hundred books in my very small flat that I have not read, and quite a lot of those I have bought myself. Yeah. Um, but it's like in this room, I think yeah. people look at this and think that all the books that are coming out are from publishers and they're not. I think probably not even a quarter of them mm. have come in from publishers. Most of them I've bought myself. Actually, maybe yeah. that's not true. Maybe a quarter of them come from publishers. Anyway, we've got to do another video now that you'll see in a few weeks. Yeah. Um, but for now, it's bye from me. Oh, I, I waved. I never wave. It's because I waved at the start. Now you've caught, I've caught you've it. Caught I'm not going to start waving, just okay, so I'll you know. That's not me. But um, yeah, it's bye from me and bye from Kate. Bye. And uh, we'll see you soon. And I'll link all of her details. Not literally her details, like her address and everything. But I'll link all of her. Where you can get hold of her. No, mm. that's... <laughs> <laughs> You're making this worse. There'll be links below. Yeah. Bye.